Well, they might be gathering wheat for prosperity, but right beside the wheat field, there's this wild weed growing cash crop in most other countries, but completely ignored here in Mongolia. Well, we've gone through so many ups and downs over the last week, but we have found that digging potatoes is more enjoyable than wondering if we're seeing the last few of poor old Lucky Fish's days. We'll see, we'll know in probably 24 hours from now. Still got to take some measurements and uh, finish rigging the trailer. That's fine. We're going to dash into town and go and get some of that amaldeside. It'd be nice if you are here so you know how it's done. Yes. But uh, for doing it there, uh, you don't really have to be. Yeah, I understand. It, yeah. Uh, it's just whether or not you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd like to be. That's Wayne. 40 years ago, he built this place. It's about as far from both coasts of Florida as you can get. And he can put us on the hard stand where we can tie the boat down. With the hurricane season fast approaching, we figured we were in the safest place there is. So you reckon this might be the last place in America like this? Yes, no, I, I think no question about that. Yeah, it's remarkable. They say the people make the place, but you know, here I think it's the place and the people. <laughs> that was Danny we were just talking to, and he's a Kiwi ex-Californian now. He left California, he was there in the heyday, the Golden State, the 60s and the 70s. And he left when it all became over-regulated. And now he came down here and he has his boat here. But he's now frustrated with the over-regulation that's all across the states. And that's pretty much why he's in, because it's as he said, the last remaining place in America where you can do things, do things on your boat and you're outside the, all the over-regulation and all the rest of it. It's a little bit of freedom. Look at this sign. No rules. It's a little bit of a living history in that place and we feel very fortunate to have found it. Like one other guy said this morning, he'd rather be there than at some posh marina, you know, over-regulated marina. And how, you know, people's human spirit is just getting sapped out of them. Even the boaters in America are feeling it now. So our routine when we put the boat to bed for off season or if we have to go away for work, putting the boat up on the hard stand, it's nice to store it out of the water being a wooden hull. She's sealed in epoxy but I just get a bit more peace of mind if it's up on the dry rather than just sitting in the water not being used. We spent the better part of a day uh, wiping down all the painted surfaces inside the boat with uh, chlorine bleach. That's proved to be really good as a mildew retardant. It kills any bugs or any foodstuffs the bugs might like to eat uh, on those surfaces. Uh, certainly the times we've come back to the boat in South Africa and Grenada, it's been um, just like new. We've finished bleaching the interior of the boat and now we're in the hotel room taking advantage of the air conditioning to dry out all of our cloth wet weather gear, sail covers, sails. What do you got down there? Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Stay so jib. It's all there. That'll go back into the boat tomorrow along with some calcium chloride crystals which will help to retard any humidity inside the cabins, absorb any moisture in there as well as uh, mildew side powder 
which we will put into each of the cabins as well. I also removed the propellers from all three outboards, flush the cooling systems with a salt remover and run the carbies dry to prevent the fuel system and jets from gumming up. Yeah, just give it a little bit of a rev, a little bit higher revs. So Zai is just uh, putting in some sealant, a sealing uh, strip in the grooves on the hatches. We haven't had any trouble with the hatches leaking on passage. Uh, we get a bit of water over the foredeck, not a lot over the afterdeck. We haven't had any issues with water coming in the cabins, which is fantastic. But Dan, the builder of the boat, he did make these hatches with a groove so that a uh, ceiling strip shaped like this. I could clean it this uh, next time, later, I guess. Yes. But I don't have time for it now. So yeah. Just putting it on. Right. It just needs cleaning the old sticky stuff. Sure, yeah, a bit of weathering on the varnish there. We need mm -hmm. to touch that up soon. Yeah. No, that'll be good. So how does it close? That's the trick. Is it too thick, too thin or what? Nice, compressed down, yeah. They might need, no, they're all right, you can, yeah, they don't need loosening at all. A bit of pressure, Yes, no, that's good. So, that with the moisture um, absorbing crystals and the mildew side and watertight hatches, or airtight, I mean, these hatches are going to be airtight now, so it should be good in there. All right. Next three more to go. Three more to go. Uh, what about the lazarette? Is that sealed? No, this one is wrong. This is different. Right. You know, there's, these are well-designed hatches. They've got the um, they've got the groove in the side here that traps any water. There's a drain hole down it's in the hole. corner there. So, you know, I mean, there's very little chance of any water coming in, coming in and we're not seeing water, even with spray coming over the deck. But Florida's another issue. I mean, we get these torrential downpours here and we just, just want to be on the safe side that we're not going to have water coming into the cabins. I don't know if this is the way to do it, but it looks this like effective. working for me. I'm just following my feeling, you know. <laughs> it's working good. All right, last day and one of the last jobs is to pickle the water maker. Sounds complicated, but it's if you've ever done any brewing before, you'll know what sodium metabisulfate is, and that's the stuff that they supply to sterilize the uh, membrane. So about a third of a container. You can see we've done it once before, so half of that into some water. dissolved in here and then we'll dilute it down in the big bucket, 10 litres, all together. We're using non-chlorinated water. If we'd been smart we would have got some of our uh, water from the water maker and put it in a 10 litre jerry can and use that to do the flush because that's non-chlorinated water. Once we've done this pickling it's supposed to be good for 10 months.
Boat's all packed away. Yeah, the things can, a little bit of air can get through everything. The all the dog. lockers are open. Everything's opened up. All bleached. Everything bleached. So we'll see if it survives a Floridian summer. We're done. After a couple of days of hard work. Getting ready. Ready? Ready for what? Ready for airplane back to Mongolia. And airplane, airplane, aircon. Airplane, aircon. Look at this. It's insane. Sweaty. Yeah, so the boat's all ready, we hope. The netting looks good. It's actually made things a little cooler up there, especially in the cabins. But uh, yeah, until we come back, be a well lucky fish. Usually we are exciting Mongolia. Excited to go, to go back. back home for some reason. <laughs> that must be the heat, right? That's the heat. Yeah, but yeah, sort of mixed feelings. It's always sad yeah. to leave the boat. It's a lot of work to prepare it for storage and then get it back out of storage. Yeah. It's a lot to be said for a charter boat or a boat that works constantly. Or continuous living aboard would be the solution. Stay back in Mongolia. Yeah, back to the paperwork. Straight, straight back to paperwork, straight back into the notaries, getting things signed. We're in the world's tiniest taxi. It's well designed though. Pretty it's pretty spacious for a car, it's about six feet long. <laughs> we plan to be in Mongolia for four months. If you hold. So please ask your questions. Oh, we've got one here. Zaya, <laughs> how many sisters have you got? Three. <laughs> and are they all married? <laughs> Plenty of time to edit videos. I was hungry, goodbye. No, okay. Lucky for sure, at least one of the warm. Oh, goodness, Mike Dillon wants something. Do a live video with Zaya version 2 and Sister Eggy. Right, we can just do some quick introductions. Wait, 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 no one's watching. <laughs> the girls made a dubious meal. Mm, dumpling milk tea soup. <laughs> with a fork, really. <laughs> While the boys drank vodka laced with gold. You know a lot about this. How much gold have you drunk? <laughs> we locked ourselves out of the apartment. <laughs> Paid a visit to the giant statue of Genghis Khan. Met some eagle hunters. It's interesting, he just puts the eagles into the boot of the Prius. <laughs> there he goes. How many, how many eagles can you get into a Prius? That's the question. Just Two by the look of it. All the time we kept an eye on the weather in Florida. The Atlantic hurricane season was arriving for Lucky Fish and we could not have picked a worse season to leave her. It was the costliest season ever at $280 billion and 3,300 deaths. First Harvey, then Irma, Maria and Nate. But it was Irma that played cat and mouse with us. For 10 days we watched helplessly as it went west and then east, then west again, finally settling on a direct path for Lucky Fish. We felt defeated. The consequences seemed inevitable. After finding the perfect hole, far from the coast on a hard stand with the boat stripped bare, tied to a 5,000 pound steel trailer on one side, and a 50 foot semi trailer on the other, it looked like we were still going to lose the boat. 
To Curtis and Danny, who did all they could to save her, we say thank you. There was nothing more that could be done. We went to Zaya's home, far in the north, to help with preparation for the winter and forget about what seemed the inevitable. Well, they might be gathering wheat for prosperity, but right beside the wheat field, there's this wild weed growing cash crop in most other countries, but completely ignored here in Mongolia. Interesting. <laughs> Come here and pick up your potatoes. <laughs> Digging potatoes is more enjoyable than watching the weather maps at the moment. What's happening at the weather cast? Well, we've gone through so many ups and downs over the last week. Watching the weather go in our favour, go against us, go in our favour. At the moment it looks like it's very much against the chances of poor old lucky fish. Mm. They're forecasting something like sustained 70 knot winds at the centre of the hurricane just passing to the west near Lehigh Acres or Fort Myers area but the system's so big there's no escape so next week we don't know what our prospects are with the boat the emotions go from thinking about it in small pieces beyond repair to having it break its tethers and go floating away on a storm surge from Lake Okeechobee. I mean, we really don't know what to think. It's tied down, stripped, but it might take something the size of Category 4 Hurricane Irma to end poor old Lucky Fish's days. We'll see, we'll know in probably 24 hours from now. Mm. We'll see, wish mm. you luck. Pretty grim. Wish us luck. Back to the potatoes. Every week we publish extended versions of these videos with bonus and extended scenes. For as little as $5 per month you can gain access to all previous and future videos via our Patreon channel. And this is our way of saying thank you to you for helping us get there.